in Purple Frog Gardens in oh, okay. Whitefish, Montana. And we started uh, back in 1991. Uh, we purchased a raw piece of land and uh, back when you could buy a piece of the flathead and um, decided we were going to uh, farm it. Uh, so 28 years ago we kind of started and we've been through a bunch of different ideas since that time. Uh, previous to that we picked apples um, and that's what we kind of got uh, hooked into uh, farming and the way of life and that kind of stuff. And you know in the early days uh, we weren't producing very much. We were just kind of uh, fly by night to try to make it happen. Uh, we had a lot of different jobs off the farm to pay the bills and that kind of stuff. And I think in the early 2000s we kind of bit the bullet and said hey we're just going to do this uh, full time. Um, in the early days we had a bunch of chickens and livestock and did eggs for uh, did egg production and that kind of stuff. Um, and as things progressed we slowly got out of that and got into a whole bunch of uh, different ideas. Um, currently we do uh, production farming. We grow anything you find at farmers market. Um, and have really come to terms with the fact that look we're just not going to get super rich off of farming and and so we have definitely evolved over time and uh, one of the newest things that we've kind of slowly got into is uh, this thing that Pam's going to talk about is care farming but before we got to care farming we definitely did a lot of production agriculture we grew a lot of stuff that you find a farmers market uh, we planted lots of fruit trees and berries and that kind of stuff and uh, have peddled those over time. Uh, more recently, uh, we've evolved into uh, doing uh, stuff at our produce stand. And it's kind of a way where people come together and we do some CSA production there, community support agriculture, people buy a share and they can pick it up. Um, but we've kind of come to terms that we grow food, yes, but we also grow community and that's part of our role in the community is to uh, try to uh, have a little fun, uh, recognizing again that we're not going to get rich in what we're doing and so we've kind of evolved, you know, we've done the livestock, we've done a lot of production agriculture, uh, we're still doing that full time because that's what pays the bills. Uh, we've gotten into fruits and berries, we do some CSAs, we do the farmers market stuff, we do some wholesale, we do some retail, and we're very small. We're what you might consider a small family farm. Um, we have about a 10 acre plot in Whitefish. We're producing on maybe four, four and a half acres of that. Uh, some of it's forested land, some of it's grassland, there's some uh, bees there that uh, a partner is keeping on the, on the farm. And more recently we've got into some seed production, some flower production mostly. Um, and the care farm stuff that Pam's going to talk about started, boy, what was that, 10 years ago? I think only four or five. That's a first. That's that a we've first. shorted a, a yeah. <laughs> Sometimes stuff yeah. seems longer than others, but uh, we've gotten into some care farm stuff. I'm going to let Pam talk a little bit about the care farm stuff. Sure. And, let's and let's click move a few through slides. some, some yeah. slides. So this is our farm, Purple Frog Gardens. That's what it looks like, small. We have about four acres under cultivation. Our house is in the upper left-hand corner. Thanks, Google. Nothing was here when we brought the land. And so when you talk about the first generation problems of the farmer, we built all this silly stuff. Wow. Uh, you know, our grandparents didn't build it, our parents didn't build it. We put the sweat, the money, and the equity into making it happen. That's why you had to work so long on farm. Yeah. This farm infrastructure is expensive. Here's the farm right now, buried under lots and lots of snow. Um, yeah, and it's still buried. And this is, you know, the coldest that I remember it being up here. And it looks like it's probably going to stay uh, that way, uh, which is really changing the way we're thinking about stuff. Our onions would already traditionally be several inches tall. They're not even planted yet. So we're so far behind the curve on some of the stuff. And you know, we've kind of learned, eh, it's going to do what it's going to do. So This is the entrance to our farm. That's our tool shed. It's one of our best ideas ever. When you walk into the farm, you grab a tool as you head out to the farm, and then as you're leaving the farm at the end of the day, you drop the tool off. Um, art and color is really important to me. 
Um, that's one of the things that I do with the Care Farm clients that we'll be showing some slides of in just a second. There's our tool shed. That is so tidy. It doesn't always look like that, <laughs> but it does now. We literally have hundreds of tools, and it's because we've had so many people over the years kind of help us. Um, you know, we've had interns on the farm who have come for a month or several months. We've had hundreds of people who have helped do with that. We've had literally uh, many more volunteers who have just come uh, for volunteer day. And so we have a lot of people, a lot of hands-on, lots of hands-on in the dirt making stuff happen. That's the back of our wheelbarrow. Yeah, lots of handwork. Um, this is a volunteer day. Wednesday morning is our volunteer day. Anybody can come from 9 to 1, and then we trade you out food at the end. Sometimes we'll make you lunch, not all day. So. These are just a row cover inside of a hoop house. Uh, that's just a fall harvest that I was about to take for a delivery, and I just thought it had so many colors and textures. That's our farm stand that's open on Fridays. Now it's sided. We make pizza. When people come and pick up their CSA or come to produce, uh, buy produce, they can come and eat pizza with us, bring a beer if you want. Yeah, we've burned pretty much every pizza we've made. So if you're coming to pizza, <laughs> you're probably going to have a little bit. Just a little bit, just the crust. Yeah. So Care Farm, oh, that we have a zoodler that's available to you. So rather than gripe to us about how many zucchinis we'll give you, we'll just send you over to the zoodler and you can process it yourself to take it home. That's just a farm tour. Not just a farm tour, that's a farm tour. So this is Dustin and I was really hoping Dustin was gonna be here today. I talked to his mom last night and they were gonna try to get here, but Dustin has been our most faithful Care Farm client. He's been with us about five years. Um, what happens with Care Farm is Rachel's here. She's from A Plus Healthcare, which is the program that manages the, the Care Farm program. There's about 14 farms in the valley. Um, fewer now, but yeah, I fluctuate. Yeah. And about 50 How many clients. Yeah, I usually say between yeah, 50 is a good number. Again, it fluctuates seasonally, but that's a good number. Yeah. Um, and what happens is A plus healthcare finds the clients. There are people who are at home, not thriving, or just sick of watching TV, or ready to interface more in the community, and they come to the farm. I get a stipend for having them come to the farm. Um, it's ten dollars an, an hour, about ten dollars an hour per client. Um, we have we've set it up so that it's Care Farm Monday at our farm. And Dustin and we have another client who comes on Mondays and we just do farm things. They interact with us just as any other volunteer that would come to the farm. Um, one of the things that we've set up is that is lunch preparation. So that's something. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> come on up here, Dustin. Um, this is Dustin uh, Slater and he's my probably first and biggest and best care farm guy he helps a lot at the farm yeah. so yeah. this was so, so monday is our big production day too so there's all sorts of uh, uh farming activities that are happening we're making the stuff happen because tuesday's farmers market is kind of like the only day that we really can get big stuff happen and so the care farm activities are kind of intermingled with everything that we're doing um, some stuff uh, uh, Dustin helps out tremendously a lot on, and some stuff he just doesn't want to necessarily get active in. And, you know, that's pretty much the story of any type of fire farming is like, you know, I'm good at some things and some stuff I'm eh, not so good at, so. Um, so that was when Dustin first came. There he is helping us pick rocks. God, you look so young, Dustin. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> and clean shaven. Um, this is another Dustin that came and helped us for a while. He no longer is at our farm. Um, these pictures all came from Cherie Tompkins. She came to the farm maybe four or five years ago and took all these photos. She has a developmentally disabled daughter, and so she was really interested in the program. and came and took all these beautiful pictures for us. Yeah, and what Dustin's sitting there in the middle of is a bunch of 
uh, uh, kale plants that were left over from the winter before, and we've left them in the ground because we like to leave the roots, in the roots in the ground. They attract worms and that kind of stuff. So we're just kind of trying to get ready for the spring. It looks like. Um, these are the hands of Gil. Uh, we, uh, when we first started the Care Farm program, we had seniors come. Um, Gil did end up leaving the farm once via an ambulance, so we don't really uh, take seniors so much anymore because we just move. We're a production farm and we move. He was fine. Um, he's no longer alive, but he, um, I just love that picture of his hands. And he was a real great addition. His calmness and um, humor was greatly appreciated at the farm. Yeah, and this is kind of an example of we're finding activities where everybody can do stand-up work, not knees in the dirt, uh, and Gil uh, pulled a lot of plugs. He sure did. Um, it was the rhubarb. He, we had sent him with a partner to pick the rhubarb, and he really wanted to pick the rhubarb. And the partner we had sent him to pick the rhubarb with was just sitting there on the ground receiving it. And it's like, wait a minute, you're putting an 80-year-old man going up and down like this to pick 80 pounds of rhubarb, and you're 20 years old? Get up! <laughs> but it was too late. <laughs> and we learned about the vagus nerve, and that was what had happened. This was bending over too much. There he is getting the plugs all lined up for the next group of people who are going to take those and put them into the ground. Yeah. Gil had so many different stories. It was hard to sometimes tell if the stories that he was telling were true or not true. But it didn't really matter because they were just stories and people really appreciated them, especially the younger generation. A lot of our interns are 20 to 30 years old and they just love those stories. Another picture. Gave them a good test to do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know and there's people. I think that's Sue's. Um, um, our dogs are part of the farm. They, everybody seems to get along pretty well with them. I think we can just blaze through some of these pictures. Yeah. How many greenhouses do you have? We have um, two hoop houses and one greenhouse. Um, transplanting is something that works really well. We're just potting up some rhubarb um, to sell at farmer's market. Um, our rhubarb slips came from the first governor of Alaska's home. And we do have some seeds of them that we're going to share, and the, um, we're just dividing up the rhubarb right then. There's uh, Dustin Fry getting ready to do some watering. Yeah, there's our rhubarb plant. Um, this is our new client, Pat um, Trick, and he helped us harvest the rhubarb last year, and he was pretty happy about it that day. There's Dustin trying to sit, probably saying, you know what I would do? Dustin's an idea man. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we've incorporated into our Care Farm Day is that we always make lunch on Monday. And so we make lunch anywhere for 6 to 15 people, depending upon who's showing up that day. And so we do a farm activity in the morning, then we go harvest a few things for our lunch, then we go down to the house and make lunch, and then everyone comes down and eats lunch. Yeah, so that everyone includes the number of interns that we might have on the farm that particular year. It might be four, it might be eight, depends on what's going on. And it's also people who are trading for CSA. We have several different clients who trade for CSA. A part of that trade includes lunch that the and the rest of the crew is making on Monday. And they're making tortillas. Um, that's our community house where the interns can use the kitchen and go to you, take showers and things. Everybody, the cabins are pretty rustic, but then there's this community house, and that's where we have had a lot of fun, lively lunches. Um, that's the beginning of the lunch outside. There's Gil. One of his stories is, is that he was an underwear model, which was kind of a fun <laughs> story. <laughs> I don't know if it was true or not, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> he could be an underwear model. 
Um, this is, we have an outdoor pizza oven. That's the pizza oven we make pizzas with on Friday night. That's Dustin and Lakota. Uh, Lakota came to us. I also work with Columbia Falls High School special ed kids. In the spring and the fall, they come to the farm on Wednesdays. And then in the winter, I work with them Fridays at the food bank. And Lakota graduated from high school and then was involved in the care farm program. And now he lives at the White House. <laughs> Dustin and uh, my dad is an avid yard sailor and buys watches. He has millions of, or not millions, but lots and lots of watches. And he sent the Dustin's watches, and there they are, showing them off. Um, last year, we built this wall um, around our farm stand. So uh, the cedar wall, we built that in the winter. Dustin and Wes helped do that. Dustin, you're in a lot of these pictures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think I should have combed my hair today? <laughs> Um, that's just a bucket of sunflower seeds. We don't have any sunflower seeds today, but we have some other ones. Um, there's Dustin <laughs> just cheering us on about all of it. Besides the muscles. Yeah, man. <laughs> it looks uh, like it's uh, <laughs> That's just a frog on the farm. Um, and then I set this up like this so that you could see the seeds that we were going to distribute. And one of the things um, that we worked on last week at Care Farm was we started making origami paper envelopes. And we're going to show you how to do that. And you're going to get six origami, six pieces of paper to make envelopes out of. And then I think we have enough labels. So if you want to just take six pieces of paper. What can I help you with? Um, you can help pass out those. Okay. Um, we're going to need to spread this out, I think, Dustin, to clean the seeds. Yeah, that'd be good. Here's the brochure from A Plus Healthcare if anyone's interested in becoming a care farmer or if you know of a client that could potentially become part of it. That would be great. This is a list of the seeds and again another piece of the Care Farm client information or contact information as well as our farm information. Yeah. So um, as Pam's kind of doing this thing, I am going to, I brought this uh, silly machine that I just built the other day, um, and it's a seed cleaner. Um, and you, if you're saving seeds, you're probably wondering, how am I going to like separate some of this chaff from the seed? Um, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with it yet because it's so new to us. It took me like six hours to build. The instructions are just available online. They follow the commercial model um, um, that people are selling. And I have like nothing into it. If I didn't buy this speed controller, um, I have no money into it. And I just wanted to demo this. Uh, and so all that's going to happen is the seeds are going to fall down. The seeds are going to come this way. The chaff is getting vacuumed this way. And we restricted the flow here. So that's going to suck the chaff down this particular way. And I built an air hole here because I'm trying to regulate smaller seeds to some really fluffy seeds are having a harder time and they're ending up over here. So I'm reducing their draft by, I built a little air hole here. I don't think for the uh, cilantro it's gonna matter as much. And you can kind of see that the cilantro is just really chaffy and there's a lot of chaff here and all we're gonna do hey it's working look at that and so you know after i have this thing for a year we'll probably outline that for this kind of seed we'll set the regulator reduce the flow by a certain amount but right now,
I can't really see it if it's working good or not, but... It is. It's working. And I just wanted to demo it because it is such a simple gadget to build. Six oh hours simple. <laughs> um, and what it just did was that. Which is really pretty remarkable. Um, I would run this through again just to try to get some more of the chaff out, but um, you know, we pretty much separated all of the chaff into one side and all of the seed into the other side, which is really a time saver. Yeah. If you want to play around with this thing, I have a few lessons that I've learned already on how I might do it different next time, so if you're interested, talk to me after. And then you're going to take one of the triangle ends and fold it up to the corner in the middle between the other two. And you probably made one of these cups when you were a kid, um, but I'm reminding you of that. And then you fold the other corner to the middle of the... How am I doing? How are people doing? Okay, so you have the triangle. And then you're going to fold your first corner up to this corner. And then your second corner is going to go up to this corner. So this is the shape you should have. How are we doing? Dusty, you want to go around and see if anyone needs help? Oh yeah, that's great. So then what's going to happen is in the two, there's two triangles and you can separate them at the top. And that's your cup. And then you'll drop the seeds in the center and then you can fold everything over after the seeds are in and you can tuck your envelope into um, the outer flap of the top one. And then it's a sealed container. You guys believe in me? Yep. Is this working? Are we going to be able to whip out six each? Oh, wow. <laughs> One of the things that's so cool about seeds is how different they all look. This is the rhubarb seeds. Um, and I don't really know why anyone would grow rhubarb from seed here, um, just because you can get a slip from a friend. Because it's uh, so pretty when it first comes up. You know, it is. It's well, I'm tiny not, little uh, uh, it's uh, plant, and it just looks so cool. And this is the first year. Pretty true to the original plant. This is the first year we've saved this uh, the rhubarb seeds. So we saved them, um, and so we haven't grown any out yet. So we don't know. It's just all one big experiment. <laughs> is it a red stem? Red stem. Yeah. And it's giant. It's giant. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how you uh, grow it, the stalks can weigh a pound each. I mean, you can grow them denser so you get long, skinny stalks, and we do a lot of that. But as you see, some of those stalks are really quite large. Can you just put these right in the ground then? Or would you want to start them in a inside first? You know, we start almost everything inside. There are some yeah. exceptions, obviously, but a lot of most things we're starting inside. And, okay. uh, now, does this group have a name other than your name? Um, it does not have a name. We've been calling it Gladys's. <laughs> the, uh, the first governor of Alaska, whose name I've looked up like 50 times and can't just seem to get it in the hard drive. Um, Okay, so we're going to pass out some seeds. That Does it, the seeds are getting passed out right now. Yeah, wonderful. Um, and that's the first one. So on the slip of paper that I passed out, that has our farm contact name, it also has the written name for all the plants you're going to get. So that if you don't know how to spell rhubarb, you can just look it up. Okay. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, the next slot one is painted mountain corn. Um, this is a really great corn that um, is actually origin originally from Montana. And Dave Christensen is the man who starts that. Where is it? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to pass out these cobs. And then you just pop off a handful uh, or however many corns you think you'd, you'd use. Um, these, these are the corn. 
And Is Dave that painted corn? Painted mountain corn from Dave Christensen. And if you want a fascinating seed story, Google him. He knows a lot. This um, corn is off the charts in bioflavonoids and antioxidants. Um, he tells a great story about how all of the um, all of the mice in his barn were just eating the darkest corn, and he found out via that because that was the one that the mice were most attracted to. That the darker one was the most. Um, was the most helpful. So this one um, that I that's getting passed out right now, I did not write that one down. I mostly just wanted to show you guys the diversity of the seeds. Um, this flower is really beautiful pink. It's called Crespus rubra, rubra, rubra. Um, pink hawksbeard is the name of it, and it was just a really pretty flower. And you can see that looks like a dandelion, so you can put that one. Yeah, and you're welcome to take that too. You'll just ask him. Give it, it's okay to give extra. Okay, so we got distracted. There's the corn. There's a bonus one that you might have to make an extra envelope for. Um, this is not, is, does anybody have any questions or how are we it's doing? Bad. Feeling interested, engaged, kind of fun, getting some seeds, learning how to make paper from Pablo. <laughs> um, Dustin's being such a great assistant. This is um, Love in a Mist, Nigella. We have not cleaned these seeds yet, but Mike's going to try. I'm going to try today, is that happening? Try, first time, brand new. First time, okay. So. Um, I just found out a little bit about this plant, Nigella Love in a Mist, that it's uh, really good. It's also called Black Human, and that it's got some real powerful healing things, which I can't remember what they were, but it doesn't work on memory. <laughs> so I think right now we have how many care farm plants? Two? Two. Two. And that seems to be a number that works pretty good for us. We like to have uh, one of our farm persons per client. And so when Pam is kind of doing the Monday stuff, one of our farm persons is kind of helping also. Um, and I think we would probably use that ratio if we increased our clients. I do know that other farms in the Valley are able to have more clients uh, per and um, for us, it seems to be one-on-one -on -one seems to work the best. I think if we had three, we could probably do two people, yeah. but there's definitely a threshold, especially like the day that Gail went to the hospital. That was super dramatic. Yeah. And, you know, we yeah. had to have enough staff to make sure that um, the clients that were staying behind were being, the needs were being met while I was going to the hospital. Yeah, and we, we definitely get quite a few things done uh, on Mondays and but there's also a lot of discussions and you know what I would do and it's not going to happen and you know phrases that we'll hear over and over and over again and it's the reason that we try to keep one-on-one uh, -on -one with the clients because um, at the end of the day um, you've definitely known that you've talked a lot about different things and tried to pay attention. Does anybody have any questions about Care Farm or because Rachel is here also and she's the administrator of the program, so and we're just one of several uh, farms that do it. Yes, Dustin. So do we start getting paid? That's, you got to take that up with Rachel. <laughs> well, one of the one of the ideas for uh, for us at this point is I'm trying to think of a business that we could do to make money, a little bit of money for our clients, maybe a little bit of money for the farm, although that's secondary. Um, and the seeds is potentially that business because. Uh, it feels like whenever we work with um, people with the seeds, it feels like it's in our DNA. Um, a great story, last fall, pouring down rain, we were working outside, I brought the Columbia Falls High School special ed kids into the barn, gave everybody a tray just like you guys got, put some seeds in there for them to clean, they were peas, and instantly everyone got calm and just was like tapping into something that wasn't in the room, that came from somewhere old. 
So I am running the Nigella Leaven and Mist through the cedar first time. I have no idea what's about to happen. Um, but I am going to turn the volume down on the vacuum. Um, we have a high school student who built one that's in the back of the room. I was, tried to bring it up here. It's just a little cardboard box one. And we were having a little bit of difficulty uh, getting it to function as well as I thought it should function. I come from an engineering background. That's what I went to school for. And so I was like, oh, there's got to be a better way. So YouTube, YouTube, if you're looking for this design, go to YouTube. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and mostly I mostly did it because it was so bloody cold and I needed something to do and it's like I can't start seed so we've been talking about these these kind of different little things and this was one of them I think the next little thing that we're going to try to do is a, a propagation chamber uh, which is like a high humidity chamber where you can put your flats and they all sprout at the same time and so that's another design that you can find stuff on YouTube you can purchase them for thousands of dollars but it looks to me like you should be able to build one for about a hundred bucks for about a hundred bucks it's an abundant world on the way down here, Mike and I were, I was talking to him about economy, um, the economics of free the seeds, our economic impact, and I think in some ways we're negative because we're teaching people how to grow food for themselves or flowers or whatever, and that's kind of a negative economic impact <laughs> because people get to save their money and spend it on other things or maybe not even earn it. The weed seeds tend to come over here um, if they're a different weight than the other weed seeds. So there is some benefit to having a silly little gadget if you're getting into uh, seed saving. Um, okay, so cilantro, I don't know if everyone knows this or not, cilantro and coriander is the same plant. Um, Coriander is the seed and cilantro is the green. Can they taste totally different? Yes. And so if you're, take as many of those uh, cilantro seeds as you want and if you don't want to plant them all, use them in chili or salsa or, or something. Sriracha. Or maybe you could make sriracha out of them, I don't know. I don't think it has that great of a flavor, it's kind of bland but um, it's a really beautiful seed head. And then I had this uh, tarp set up because I didn't want to get yelled at. I'm a pretty big mess maker. So maybe you can come up here and clean one of these shanks and then take some of these Orax seeds. The Orax seed has been working terrible through here. Uh, it is just so light and wind catchy that it mostly all ends up over here. This is why I built the hole. Um, to let more draft in and slow the pressure out, and that definitely helped. And I think over time we'll be able to figure out how to get it to come on this side. It's sort of like the parsnip seed, isn't it? Yeah. That seed. Yeah, yeah. The, the rhubarb seeds didn't work either. The root, yeah. So the whiskey so seed, uh, calendula did work after I drilled the hole. And so I was able to get the calendula, heavy calendula on this side and light calendula on this side, which was really interesting. Oh, the nigella seeds, which was the last one. This is the seed pod, and they're just so beautiful. Um, you can use them in dried flower bouquets or wreaths um, or whatever. And I just brought some of the pods so you can see the diversity of the seed. This is what gets all the moisture and blossoms. Nigella. So uh, Dustin and Patrick, who are our no, care farm clients, that was the they come to the farm year round. And so Dustin and Patrick have been coming during most of this winter. There's been a couple of Mondays that have just turned out to be way, way too windy, cold, so we've been having to cancel. Besides that, we are definitely still finding activities to do on the farm, whether it would be in the shop or in the hoop house or in the barn. Um, and uh, it is a year-round activity for us. 
Yeah. We um, had a really great January and we had some time to work in our barn and we actually were able to do some painting there. But that got shut down so we haven't been back outside since <laughs> on the Care Farm Monday. Okay, so Orac, what's the next one? Ooh, I love this one. So this is Chinese Lantern. It's, um, I'm realizing now that almost everything I brought was um, an ornamental. Um, and this is what uh, it looks like. There would have been maybe two or three more on here, but they got kind of roughed up. And I, again, this is, uh, I planted these from seeds that I purchased. They're biennial, so last year was the first year they made these pods. So I haven't planted these seeds yet, but I'll give it a try. But look how well that color's holding. Oh, it's yeah, the, uh, and then inside is going to be a little, um, like, raisin that the seeds will be in. So just take one of those. And you don't even need to stick that in an envelope. If you don't crush it, um, you can just take it home and uh, try planting it. I think what I, we're going to do is break open those little raisins and then try to separate out the seeds. But it's so desiccated when I tr was trying to do that, it wasn't working. So maybe we'll just throw the whole pot in there. Is there anything else you can cancel? Um, I don't think so. Oh, we can do We haven't done that yet. Let's see what's next. Oh, larkspur. Those seeds will need to be cleaned. Yes. Um, that's the cilantro chaff. Not have brought those seeds either. Okay. How did those go? Well, we, uh, those have all been done. Here, we can do the, the calendula instead, which is a um, beautiful orange, flat, daisy like. Um, and the way I always remember these seeds is they look like a C, the letter C. Oh, <laughs> or worm. Okay, that good. Yay! Yeah, I like it. I think one of the most important things that I would hope that people would walk away with is considering becoming a care farm or accepting a care farm client. It doesn't necessarily have to be the farm. Also, Dustin meets me on, at the food bank on Fridays and volunteers there with me. So if you just have room in your life to share your life with a person who might not have as much opportunities as other people, um, yeah. Should I have been bringing that business card? Oh, should have. Should have. Yeah. And can I say, as a, as a mom, um, I'm Dustin's mom, and the stuff that it, that he's come from, the self esteem, the the information he's learned. Um, these they come home, they have um, made different recipes of pizza that they make with goat cheese, and I mean, this program is absolutely amazing and the benefits that Dustin has gotten is just unbelievable. I'm so thankful for all these farmers that do this. Now I want to buy a tractor. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he always comes up with lots of ideas. <laughs> so, oh, sorry yeah. I didn't bring the larkspur. There was, um, one of the things uh, that might happen for Mike and I is we went to look for screens and things for seed, our seed business. We went to the thrift store and picked up all of this in one trip at one thrift store. So this is one screen that you could use for cleaning. And why um, you would want a, a, a screen, just for clarification, is like if I was doing this at home, I would pretty much stop this, take all this, throw it in here, sift it out. Obviously the holes are wrong size. The, most of the uh, branches would stay behind and I'd get the seeds and the chaff which I would either run through there or rescreen. And so you do Yeah. And but you don't need to go buy something special. You know, none right. of these things cool. were special. And then I happened to know the ladies at the thrift store. I told them what I was doing it for and they just gave me everything. So <laughs> um, anyway, just and then these are just measures. This, we were trying a few different funnels on Mike Cedar to see how that would work. Another idea we have, which we haven't implemented yet, is using this as a seed separator. Um, this is broken, so they were extra happy to give me this. 
Um, and but I think that we might be able to break up some, like maybe those Chinese lanterns or some of the um, harder seal um, seeds this way. But you don't need to spend a lot of money to fool around with it. Like Mike said, you know that's a ten dollar yard sale vacuum. All the rest of the stuff we just had kicking around. So do you use the seeds that you harvest yourself and then replant, or are you we do? Oh, yeah. We not all of it, not all of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things you know, we're market farmers, and we're just like kind of beginning the whole seed saving thing. Dill, cilantro, those things we've saved forever. Um, but as far as some of the other stuff, we're just learning. Um, and on that just learning note, we have some winter squash seeds to distribute and our winter squash seeds were grown. Um, there are a few different varieties. They probably crossed. Um, if you have some extra space, you may want to stick these in your garden. If you're pretty particular about the winter squash that you want, um, you may not want them. But um, there's a really cool, you give one to everybody, really cool organization called the Experimental Farm Network that I've become a groupie of. And these seeds were um, from the Nanticoke Indians and their land race. What land race means is that they just plant them regionally and then they just save the seeds based on whether they cross pollinate or not. And those were um, just one of those Nanticoke winter squash. Experimental Farm Network, it's a great follow up. Um, group to spend some time when it's been cold outside and you're dreaming of planting things. You can spend a lot of time on the web page. Um, so Dustin and, and uh, uh, Patrick, you come to the farm every Monday, like Pam was been saying. It takes Pam quite a bit of forethought to kind of figure out what's going to happen on that day. Um, a little bit more than it might take for our production side. Um, and you know, everything doesn't always go 100% the way it's supposed to go, but it goes about 65-70%, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and so if you're considering a care fund client, do take that into account a little bit, that some of the chores that you might have care fund clients do might not be 100% some of the production-oriented goals from your farm. Um, um, but there is an income stream that Care Farm does provide also, uh, which does help. And it's also uh, pretty satisfying work. I can tell from Pam's passion that she desperately wants to keep the programs going. And Dustin has been coming for so many years. And so we've seen him, his skill level really evolve uh, over time. Um, and it's a program that I think that we're going to continue, and I would encourage you to do it. But if you want to talk about some of the real ins and outs of the secrets on why it might work, why it might not work, um, I'm happy to talk about those privately. Uh, a final thing, if you have a high school student in your life, um, we're circling organizing an alternative spring break. We've hosted a lot of alternative spring breaks for college students before, uh, where they would come and actually stay at the farm. Uh, it's not gonna happen this year because there's just too much snow and the cabins that they would stay in are just gonna be too cold. So this year we're just offering it for high school students, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of spring break. Um, <laughs> you're not a high school student. <laughs> so. Um, please pass that out if you know any high school student who's just going to be sitting around moping because they're not in Mexico. Or <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's Mike and I in the rhubarb row quite a few years ago, and um, our goal is that everyone figures out how to create the life that they can just love it all. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming, and I hope that uh, we get a few more care farmers out of it. Yeah. And seed savers. Thanks for your help. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any questions or comments or anything? Um, sign up for our email list if you want to. You have to, we can bring a paper that says that. You have to be vested and go to our web page.
Um, Ray Dustin, Pam at purplefroggardens.com. Nice stuff, dude. Is that's our email and uh, I'm way more responsive this time of year than I am in the summer. So were there some of those seats the Oric? So Spilanthes and the Larkspur I didn't give you. I uh, didn't they didn't end up in the her yard sale box. Okay. Um, this is for Rod's class, which is next. Yeah. I think right now in the flow of the day there's a, a break for lunch, so Patronize the booth downstairs, learn something from them, eat some lunch, and foods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Dustin? What's your favorite part of working on the farm? If you had to pick one chore, what's your favorite thing? Not the one you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, personally, yeah. I like milking a goat at Linda's farm. Yeah. But I like all the social interaction I, I've received at the care farms. It's really broadening my friend thing, friend list, and all that. Yeah. You know. I'm happy to hear that. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever milked a goat? No. <laughs> it's I'll so have to try. fun. I'll have to try this. And milk. The milk I can't is really good. I can't. Goat milk is really a lot thicker. Yeah. But I can't stand the freaking machine milkers because you know doing it by hand you can tell, but it's harder to tell with the machine because you don't want to draw out too much milk because then the goat won't make more milk for a long time because you have to keep a little bit of milk in their udder, you know. So you squirt off like two two squirts of garbage and then you milk them. It's fun. Cool. Well, thanks for sharing. And, and we have plants all spring and summer everywhere. He, he, yep, he plants stuff all over the place. Well, that's exciting. <coughs> nice. Very cool. Um, on the um, handout that has our contact in the countryside of care, our, uh, care farm, the very last URL um, is for the a YouTube Countryside of Care that's been made. It's really nice. It's about an hour long um, video featuring the care farm program in the Flathead Valley. And Dustin and I are stars. Yeah. <laughs> and Diana is in it also. So. Are there care farms in other parts of Montana? You know? No, not really. Not associated with our specific program. We're all right. pretty unique actually to the to the country in the way that we operate. Um, there are lots of different farms kind of spread out in random places around the country that um, kind of seek to do the same thing as host people with varying level, levels of abilities. Um, but we're the only one here right now. We're always trying to think of ways we can, you know, expand and, and grow. So hopefully not. And wasn't this modeled after a, a, a situation in the Netherlands? Yeah, exactly. Right. Martin Fisher, a Dutch Dutch yeah. man who had a, a heavy hand in, in getting care farming established in the Netherlands and Switzerland as well. He, he started this program here in the Valley. Great. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome thing. I know another young woman who uh, goes to some farm somewhere and okay. she just loves it. Yeah. Just loves it. Yeah, it's great. If you're right here interested in cool programming models working with people yeah. with different abilities, um, the Butte Silver Bowl Develop Bow Development Council last year um, started a food truck called Dish Ability. And it's so neat. They uh, will rent it out to local chefs for almost free if they hire um, the trained staff that the Built Butte so Silver Bow Disability Council has trained in kitchens. So you have a restaurant that wants to borrow the food truck for the weekend. The restaurant is suddenly exposed to a brand new population that they maybe never had considered working with. And it's a really good model and it's been quite successful in view. And of course, a big picture idea would be to make something like that here. Because Dustin, I don't want to do that. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, set my van up. Yeah. Justin and I both have idea diarrhea. So we're good. <laughs> so, 